Okay. This this is better. Well, we we spent a lot a lot of time talking with Dixie and uh, Jennifer, so I know a lot of what's happening at the moment with books and so on. And uh, I read the original one, the the older version. Big thing is that you are the first man from this branch of the family who I'm talking to. You you may know that uh, I come and represent, uh, uh, to say the least, a very skeptical audience. And and myself also, I'm a uh, Wishful thinking, but at the same time quite skeptical on, on this. Uh, on the Can you tell me something about this audience? Uh, well, it's called MECTAO, Men Go in Their Own Way, which is a subdivision of uh, men's rights, uh, red pill, activism, and so on. I guess I'm from a min minority who do not uh, cut themselves completely off uh, communication with women and so on because some are. So first question would be, when you were growing up, how did it feel to to grow in such an untypical environment? Or did you perceive it as untypical? Or, is it, or was it something that just normal, perfect to you, you never noticed anything special? Well, um this is one of the challenges of, I suppose, being a, a young person. I didn't have a frame of reference, which is to say that I didn't know why or how it could be different. Um, I think that I learned that my life was a little bit unusual as I attended public school and, um, you know, visited classmates at their homes and saw how their lives were a little bit different. But I don't think I had a sense that my life was so different that it was strange or, anything, or uh, you know, that something was wrong or... Um, or perhaps that I was, you know, more uh, more blessed than the average child. I, I felt blessed as a, as a young child. I felt like I had a good family. But, um, I, do you mean uh, when you when you ask this question? Do you mean um, to be raised by Helen Andelin's daughter, and to some extent by Helen Andelin herself? Yes. This uh, no, my guess is it, it must have been some very special environment, not quite untypical. You know, uh, my relationship with Helen Andelin was not uh, a strong one because she was a very busy woman. We saw her occasionally, and she was kind, and, uh, you know, she knew, of course, our names, and um, I knew that she was a very successful woman, and I visited her book printing uh, place of business, and, uh, you know, I didn't know her terribly well. She was a very busy person. She had a lot of grandkids, too. You know that um, before she died, she had over 68 grandchildren. Wow. I was just one of them. So, but my mother, my mother was a good mother. Um, I think that it has taken me into adulthood to appreciate um, her care as a mother and her example as a woman. Um, and I suppose that I'm still learning about these things, uh, gaining perspective, I should say. Um, but yeah, I probably just spoke a long time. I'm not sure if I answered your question. But. Yes, quite. Uh, but uh, okay, maybe you didn't have uh, close contact with Helen, but uh, in your own family, anyway, you, you also had uh, somewhat uh, the same atmosphere, the same kind. I think so. My mother is different from Helen Andelin in some ways. She uh, um, was less oriented to her work. My mother did not write a best-selling book. She did not start a business or a movement. Um, she had and raised seven children, which itself is a big job. And um, so I was very close to my mother, saw a lot of my mother. Uh, she was, um, my father, of course, is was available to us, but he's a hardworking man, and um, with seven children, you can imagine why he would have to work so hard. Uh, he, uh, especially when I was younger, he was gone a lot at work, so, um, so yeah. I'll have to ask my next question. As far as I understand, uh, your first marriage uh, was, was not a success, let's see. That is true. Looks very strange to say the least yeah? uh, considering the environment in which you are growing up so the question is uh, did you 
I don't know, searched inside yourself? You know, how did it happen that you could not recognize the the proper signs or the proper person or didn't do the proper steps? I don't know, stuff like that. Well, it's rather easy to say in hindsight that a mistake was made, but I don't think a mistake was made at all. Um, I do not regret anything that I did. Uh, I don't regret marrying my first wife. Um, I think she's a wonderful woman. And I think that uh, every day we have a choice to make. We can make many choices. Every day is a new day. And people are faced with uh, choices and temptation every day. And uh, some people start with good intentions and they take a bad path in life. I think that we started in the correct way. And I think that uh, certain things led her to her decision to want a divorce. And I think that was a mistake for her. But that was her choice to make. I cannot force her to stay or to, to remain married. Um, and yeah, so I don't think any mistakes were made. I don't think I married the wrong person. I don't think I misjudged her. I think she's a good woman uh, who made bad decisions. And that resulted in a divorce. I'm not sure how, how, for how long have you been married to her? I was married for two years. Two years, so there was no, not much space for children or anything like that? Uh, we certainly could have had a child if we had tried, and I'm glad we did not in retrospect, because having a child in a divorce is very challenging. Um, I think it's much, much easier to start your life again with no children. But, you know, having said that, I, I've seen many people, I know many people who have been married several times and had children in different marriages, and they've found happiness. It's not impossible. So you were optimistic and tried again, as, I, as far as I understand. Well I, well, I suppose you could say that, but it took a long time for me to be willing to try again. I was not optimistic at first. It was a painful experience, and I had a lot of growing to do personally. I had a lot to learn about myself and about life and happiness, and um, I believe happiness is a skill. And I got married very young. And I had a lot of learning to do about that skill of happiness. I had to practice that. Um, and now I'm married again, and things are very ideal. And I am grateful. I have no regrets. Actually, I heard several times that happiness is a skill, and I, I, I try to integrate it, this knowledge a bit in, in my own life. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, at least from what I, what I read and what I heard, uh, children tend to get this skill from the environment. And again, that goes uh, to the environment. I think a person can be taught certain things about this skill, but the skill cannot be given to anyone. I think I I've noticed that some people seem to be naturally talented at happiness, but I don't think it's a skill that someone can give you. Someone can kind of teach you um, to ride a bicycle, but you have to do it. No one can really give you the skill of riding a bicycle. They can teach you the fundamentals, but you have to get on the bicycle and you have to go. And you have to risk pain, uh, you have to risk accidents and trouble, uh, and you have to do it. Um, again, some people are very talented at this though, um, from birth. I, I, don't, I don't know what the difference is with people. I feel like when I was young, I was not talented at this. I was uh, a troubled child, a very anxious child, um, not because my parents gave me trouble or were bad parents just because I needed to figure out um, how to find peace, how to find happiness myself, how to, how to practice and how to get good at this. Um, I'm not saying that I'm some kind of Zen master or some, some kind of perfectly happy person, but I've learned a lot over the years. My, my measure of success is where I started and where I am now. Um, and I do think my parents helped. I think parents can be a great help to children, to helping them to be happy, but every individual must walk this road alone, uh, largely. Could you describe, uh, since you have the experience, uh, how does it feel to, to be married to a Russian girl compared to, to your local? Well, uh, I don't have a lot of uh, frames of reference for that question, but I think Barry, being married to Valeria, who's from St. Petersburg, is wonderful. She is a very feminine woman. Uh, I don't want to say that American women are not feminine or Canadian women. I'm actually originally from Canada. It's not that they're not feminine, but 
Um, I find Russian women in general, and Valeria particularly, more feminine than the average American woman, which I appreciate very much. Okay. Have you read the book called The Man of Steel and Velvet? I've read big portions of it. I've not read all of it. What do you think of it? Or could you describe a, a bit, maybe, uh, the spirit? What, what, what spirit does it have? I think the book is, uh, is a well-intentioned book that I find difficult to read. Um, I think the book reads a little bit like uh, a sermon in a church, and this is really not my style. I find that difficult to follow. I don't mean to disparage my grandfather. I think that he, he had good intentions, and I think that he worked very hard in this book. But um, I think the book badly needs an update uh, for modern audiences, uh, and I think it, it could be very much improved for readability. Um, having said that, I think that the book is mainly about, um, it seems to describe or spend a lot of time trying to describe Uh, the role of man relative to women, relative to society, uh, the responsibilities of a man. Uh, it spends a lot of time and energy, uh, which I agree with, uh, on the idea that men must uh, make themselves better uh, in order to be worthy of, of a family, of a good marriage. It uh, focuses a lot on, on uh, self-regulation, uh, self-care, self-improvement. These are good ideas. Um, And, and in fact, uh, I think that if I were to be involved in any kind of project to update the book, I think it would have a similar focus. Mm -hmm. uh, just to clarify, are you, do you consider yourself a religious person or very or not, not much? I am a religious person. Well, I, would, I consider myself a spiritual person most. Um, I have a deep faith in God, a personal faith in God. Um, I pray regularly to God. I have hope for an afterlife. I believe in um, morality and I believe in justice and good and love and ideas like this. Um, in terms of religion, I, I feel that I am very open-minded about the concept of religion, especially, you know, as I would suppose we're really saying organized religion. Um, I'm open to the idea. I don't really feel like, um, I don't really feel a sense of rejecting any kind of particular ideologies or embracing one particular ideology. Uh, do I understand correctly that you are very strongly involved in this uh, publishing process at the moment? Yes. Hmm? I am the chief operating officer. So, uh, How do you feel about it? What, what is it like to be a man and to be involved in such a process worldwide? You know, it's interesting. I, I, I think about that and I, I feel very blessed to be involved because I think Fascinating Womanhood is a very worthy organization. Um, I think that it can do a, a great deal of good for women and for families, for marriages. Um, very few people in this world have the luxury of working in an area that they truly believe in, that inspires them, that gives them a sense of purpose. Fascinating Womanhood is uh, truly on the front, front lines in a great war against the family and against marriage, and in my opinion, against happiness. Um, and so I'm very proud to be involved, and I'm very excited anytime we meet an individual who is helped by our movement. Um, You know, of course, this is a business. We, we have bills to pay. We're trying to grow. Uh, profit is part of our effort, but the most important thing for us is and has always been uh, helping each individual that we can. And we've seen amazing things, Sergei. We have the most amazing collection of success stories, testimonials, of women whose lives have completely changed because of fascinating womanhood, um, whose marriages have been saved, who have... Uh, you know, found a lifelong uh, relationship um, with the help of Fascinating Womanhood. And so to be a part of that is, is a great privilege. Sounds great. Okay, then uh, th that was really interesting and uh, useful information, I think. I'm out of my questions, but for the closing, uh, maybe it will take longer than all the other questions. 
since I represent, uh, as I said, skeptical and, uh, well, you can say hostile yeah, mm -hmm. audience, uh, people who are very sometimes disappointed, sometimes they just ruined from the previous experience and so on, so they are very sometimes quite extreme, extremely hostile to, not even to the marriage, sometimes even to the interaction with women at all. What could you, if you had the chance, and you had the chance to, like, uh, uh, try to throw a bridge to the other, to the other, to the other river bank, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, try to throw something to, to make them come to you, or, I don't know, maybe come in the middle. I am happy to talk to anyone who is angry or frustrated or hostile, as you say. I'm not afraid of that anger or that fear. Uh, I spent many years being very angry myself. This is very familiar territory. I've, I've lived in this frame of mind uh, for a lot of my adult life. And I can tell you that uh, you will never be happy being angry. You'll never be happy being hostile. You'll never be happy rejecting all women or assuming that all women are bad. Um, you're never going to be happy alone. Uh, I would rather be happy. And I found happiness uh, in letting go of my anger and in learning new truths and in practicing the skill of happiness. Um, and I want everyone to be happy. I, I, uh, the longer I live, the less interested in I am interested I am in judging people and the more interested I am in other people's happiness. Uh, as well as my own. You know, one thing I found in this life, I've looked for happiness in a lot of different places, uh, mostly the easy places because it, it turns out that happiness is a skill and it's hard and you have to work on it. it it's not easy. Uh, but I've looked for happiness everywhere and the only thing that I've found that really works for me is lifting other people up. Uh, it's the only thing that makes me happy, really. The only thing that really lasts. You know, I, I enjoy having fun, hanging out with friends good movies, food, whatever, but none of this really makes me happy and it will never make anybody happy. Money uh, is great, doesn't make me happy, not really. Uh, having a nice car, all these things that people work and die for, they don't really give you happiness. I want happiness for you, I want happiness for everyone I meet. Um, and I encourage you, if you're listening, if you're angry, if you're full of fear or hate, I encourage you to consider that Whatever life remains that you have left to live, live it happily. Live it, live it well. Don't waste your time. Life is short. And uh, talk to me. I'll talk to you. I'm, I'm not afraid of the anger, the hate. I, listen, I, I bathed in it every day for decades. I know. It's a waste of time. It'll get you nowhere. And, and happiness, life is meant to be lived happily. Um, obviously, I mean... Some of the stuff, I say it like it's obvious because it is. Um, why would you spend your time bitter, angry? Um, you have no idea how many days you have left. Enjoy this one and the next one if you get one. Um, but, but don't just enjoy it. Be happy. That was impressive. <laughs> and I, ho hopefully we will have uh, some more talking. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye.